everyone in this week's About Your Retirement. We're talking on the subject that many of us may deal with in life or you may be dealing with it with a loved one. And it's often a very difficult conversation for families. We're talking about assisted living. Jim McWhorter is now with me. And Jim, good morning. Thanks for being here with us. Happy yes. New Year. Happy New Year, yes. <laughs> Now, we've been talking about assisted living, and in your experience, what have you found, I guess, what are some clues that might be, uh, that you might see that mean that somebody needs to be in assisted living? Well, Jennifer, you know, recently we've talked about uh, two different groups of people that seek assisted living, and the first group are those that are, are planners, and mm -hmm. they want to be involved in the decision of where they live. They don't want to burden their families if their health declines uh, very quickly. Uh, the other group of people are those who do not consider that and uh, loved ones have uh, a big job in in recognizing some of those signs and mm -hmm. and, and the most common signs are uh, when you're when you pull up in front of your elder parents house if you're used to seeing it uh, neat and tidy in the yard and all and it's not anymore you go inside the house and it's not neat and tidy things are out of place um, things are are, are not clean like they usually are. If you look in the refrigerator and you see that there's not a lot of food or a lot of spoiled foods, and then you even uh, look over at, at mom or dad and their, their personal hygiene is lacking. Maybe mm -hmm. they wear the same clothes for several days in a row. Uh, they, they could even wear summer clothes in the winter and winter clothes in the summer. And, and all of these signs are either consciously or subconsciously telling us that I don't want to be by myself. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to be alone. I want to uh, be able to do things, have some fellowship. Uh, I want to be able to eat good. And, mm -hmm. and obviously, that's a big indicator, you know, the refrigerator uh, being empty. And so uh, these are all signs of depression. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're telling us that, that they, want to, they want some security of knowing they're not alone. And they want some security of knowing that if they do get scared because their health may be declining, that they've got some nursing assistance available mm -hmm. if and when they need it. Yeah, they have to be ready to. I just had a conversation with my grandmother about this last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, what are some tips to make this, uh, if they do decide to move, what's to make the transition a little easier? Well, I think there's uh, the, the two biggest things that, uh, that we have seen, and these all come from surveys of people that move to assisted living and the number one thing that residents moving into assisted living say is don't wait too long. Mm -hmm. uh, make your move while you can still enjoy a certain quality of life and what, so that you can get established in your new home, in a new community. And then the second biggest tip is, uh, is when you're actually doing your research and you're visiting uh, assisted living communities, um, your first impression is usually your best. Yeah. When you walk into uh, a building, uh, does it feel homey? Does it feel like family when you are touring and you see residents and, and talk to them and you, you meet staff members? Um, all of these things uh, become very important. In the best okay. communities, you, you will have a very positive feeling just walking into the building. All right, Jim, thank you. Tune in every Sunday morning for this, uh, for more about retirement issues and elderly living, or you can go to newsline.com slash retirement for any information at any